I have tried. I have tried. Lord knows I've tried. I, the sin in me, the sinfulness in me, really wants to wage all-out retribution on the reporters and others who are going after not just the truckers in Canada, but also the people who've given money to them. The Canadian government freezing bank accounts. People are losing their jobs. A hacker hacked into the group funding site where people were donating money to the Canadian truckers. He released all the information. Reporters from American press shops and others went after those people, tried to interview them, harass them. People lost their jobs. People got bullied. A ice cream shop or gelato shop owner in Canada had to shut down her business because of the amount of harassment. People's bank accounts got frozen in Canada. The police say they're still going after people. My gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if people started uh, outing, doxing, as they call it, the release of private information, those who uh, outed those people who gave money. I expect it's going to happen. I do. And... I don't think I can be a part of it, nor you if you're a person of faith, nor should we condone it, however hard it is, because we want to. I've looked, I I have to say, I want to spend a few moments on this idea from the Sermon on the Mount of turning the other cheek. It's not the only occasion where Jesus says it in in Scripture. It's actually recounted as well in Luke in the roughly same context, and a lot of people read it inappropriately as pacifism as we not not just must turn the other cheek, but surrender. That's not what it says. But what it is for the Christian is a prohibition on retaliation. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And it is throughout the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the same. There is such a thing as progressive revelation. In progressive revelation, God slowly reveals himself over time. So, for example, the role of women in Scripture improves over time. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, the role of women uh, improves time and time again to the point where Jesus' first revelation of resurrection is to women. Women are active in the early church. It's a clear differentiation between the Old Testament and the New. Homosexuality, on the other hand, stays the same. It's condemned in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. There's no elevation or change in status. It's condemned. The progressive revelation of Scripture shows it stays the same. The role of slaves changes. You can see over time from the Old Testament to the New Testament, progressively, Scripture reveals God intends for men not to have masters and slaves, but to treat each other as brothers. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. We are all equal before God and should treat each other the same way. You see, as it evolves and Scripture reveals itself, the improved relationship. Jesus does not come to upend that institution, nor does Paul call for it, but Paul essentially does call for its ablution through the way that a master must treat the slave. We can see where it's headed. Vengeance, retaliation, Progressive revelation of Scripture shows us it does not change. It does not change. The fact of the matter is we cannot retaliate. We cannot take vengeance. It's not for us to do. Vengeance is God's. From 1 Samuel 26, But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him, or his time will come and he will die, or he will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear and water jug that are near his head and let's go. Ah, but you say, ah, but you say, that is David and Saul. Well, actually Proverbs itself says, do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. Paul as well writes in Romans that you're not to seek revenge. You're to rely on the Lord for vengeance. Even Joseph to his brother says what you meant for evil, God meant for good. In Acts 23, Paul is before the Sanhedrin. Ananias strikes him on the mouth. And Paul questions him. He does not call down God's wrath on him. And Paul had the power to do that. 
we can't respond with retaliation as Christians. Some say that makes us weak. We weaken our response. There are a lot of people I know, including a lot of friends of mine, and this is why this discussion has come up so often. They're like, surely there's a loophole in there. Can't we say it's self-defense? You know, Scripture does allow self-defense. Turning the other cheek does not mean when someone storms into your house, you're not allowed to shoot them. You can. But if you're just trying to out someone's information because they're outing someone else's information, you're doing it as a form of retaliation, not self-defense. Your motive matters and your heart matters in this. And Christians cannot engage in retaliation. Christians cannot engage in vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So you can't. I've looked. You can't retaliate. Our ways are not their ways. Now, this is where it gets tricky. We are in tribal times. And the tribes want to act like each other. They both think the other is worse than they are, and they want to be even worse to be like the other. I hear all the time from my Republican friends. The left is vicious. The left is vile. We should be as mean to them as they are to us. And I have liberal friends, Democrat friends. And all the time they tell me that it's the Republicans who are nasty and they're too nice. I go on Bill Maher's show on HBO. Every time I go on Bill Maher's show, he laments how much nastier, meaner, and vicious the Republicans are than the Democrats. Both sides think the other is worse. Both sides see themselves as pure. Both sides see themselves as flawless. I saw a conservative commentator a while back suggest that Christianity makes conservatism weak, and if we keep following what Christians say, we're never going to fight back. Well, our ways are not their ways. Our ways are not their ways. We don't have to fight in the same way. God's not saying you can't defend yourself, nor is God saying that you don't have to, you can't pray for him to exercise vengeance. You certainly can pray to God to exercise vengeance. The Psalms are full of prayers begging God for relief, begging God to punish bad people. You can also pray that they have a change of heart. You can pray for forgiveness. And you yourself, that's the Christian response. I can't find a way around it, folks. I'm sorry. Vengeance is the Lord's. Yours is forgiveness. You have to forgive. Let God deal with it. And then what you can do is to the aggrieved, the people who have been wounded, you can help them. You can speak up for them. Throughout history, throughout Scripture, the Christian who turns the other cheek, his response is then to speak up for righteousness. When Jesus is struck on the face, He wants to know what it is he has done. We have to forgive. Y'all, I've tried. I would love, I would love to go after those who have harmed good and innocent people. But I can't. Neither can you. And I know you want to. It's our natural response. It's our response as people of a political tribe to see those targeting us. We want to go after them. You can't. Your tribe is an eternal tribe. Yours is a Christian tribe. You start throwing off your Christian tribe to placate your political tribe, and sooner or later you're going to have to ask yourself, which tribe are you really in? Or were you ever in the Christian tribe to begin with? The Christian calling is better, and I will leave you with this. In the Beatitudes, the powers... The ethics, the morals, and the standards of the Christian, they're designed to look weak to the world. Blessed are the meek, the weak, what? Who inherits the earth? Who sees the face of God? The Christian ethic, the Christian standard, turns it all on its head. The world, from the world's perspective, it looks weak. I can totally see why someone who is not a Christian would say Christianity is making us weak. We need to stand up. We need to fight. We need to get revenge. But blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, 
for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before me and before you. Vengeance is the Lord's. I've tried. I've looked. I've tried to twist the scripture. I've I've tried to look under it. I've delved into the commentaries. I've looked at the original Greek. You can't do it. We can't participate in vengeance and retaliation as much as we want to, as much as we want to rationalize it. And I want to be very, very clear to all of you. Some of you will try to rationalize it, and some of you will decide you're just not going to be a Christian this week. If you're not going to be a Christian this week, were you ever a Christian? You can't turn off your faith. Your faith has to flow through you. You have to glorify God. It is the chief end of man to glorify God and enjoy him forever. As much as we want to be just like the other side, God's ways are not our ways. And people of faith, our ways are not their ways. We have to find different ways to navigate through life other than being part of the political tribe and behaving just like everyone else. Because everyone else, if they're not of the faith, they don't make it to eternity with us. They go somewhere else. This is the very best they will ever have it. This is the very worst you will ever have it. And if you decide to throw off the shackles of faith, perhaps you never had it. And then you just remember, it may look from your perspective when you're not shackled by the weakness of Christianity that you're doing better, you're scoring points, you're racking wins, and you're taking scalps. And this will be the best in all of eternity you will ever have it. And for those of us who are frowned upon, cursed, abused, persecuted, ridiculed for being a Christian, for not willing to fight dirty like the other side, well, this is the worst we'll ever have it for all of eternity, far longer than your lifespan on this planet. You'll have it far better than this. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth.